Welcome to one of the most ruthless, savage Michael Jordan stories that you've ever heard. Now, you may have heard of this story before, but you've never seen it made like this. This video includes everybody that was involved on this day. Antonio Harvey, Derek Martin, Byron Scott, Phil Jackson, Michael Jordan, on the day that he got his revenge. This is why you never talk trash to the GOAT. Because even if you think that you have the game won, you don't. And this is the story. A few things before the video begins. I really want to say I hope you guys are enjoying the MJ series. This is 23 Michael Jordan videos in 23 days. The one thing I'd love for you to do is hit that like button. These videos take a long time to edit and produce for you guys. So if you do enjoy them, please help me out by hitting that like button. Let's aim for 3,000 likes for the next video. If you are new around here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more MJ content and hit that notification button so you're notified when a new MJ video releases. All the video footage and credits is located on the screen right now and also down below in the description box if you want to watch the full videos in their entirety. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. You inspired what many say was one of his greatest comebacks. And again, you would never think that Mike was going to create this comeback and you sparked the moment. I'm with the Grizzlies and uh, one of our teammates, Derek Martin, had been in LA with Mike when he was filming Space Jam. It was the summer after he filmed Space Jam. Okay. Uh, 1995. Yes. Mike always doing Space Jams. That's right, Space Jam. So he has uh, a court built down for him on a lot. Here in Los Angeles. Yes, here in Los Angeles for him to play basketball. Right. He's got every overseas guy playing and everything. So he's like, this is not challenging to me. He calls Magic Johnson. Says, hey, you got any guys? that play at UCLA, I hear about the UCLA legendary runs, can you send some of these guys down here? So Magic calls me and says, hey, little fella, can you take a couple guys down there and play against Mike? I said, all right, cool, no problem. So I get Chris Mills, Tracy Murray. So we go down there and play. We walk in, we're waiting our turn. Finally, it's our turn. We come on, it's 6-6, six, six, going to seven. One thing you don't want to do is give Michael Jordan bulletin board material <laughs> don't, don't say anything don't talk <laughs> trash to him just let him be i come down on the break on the wing and go with what we call a hands up move like i'm going to shoot the shot michael jumps up i go by and lay it up for game i commence to talking the best trash <laughs> ever against him Michael, you get out of my town. This is my town. Wow, 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 wow. You You're were not there. even you the went. real MJ. My man, Magic Johnson, is the MJ. I'm just going, going, going. Going so hard that Chris Mills, 6'8", picks me up with my feet are dangling. And to put my, <laughs> Little fella. Yeah, hand over my mouth. And he says, Derek, stop. We always say, let the sleeping giant sleep. Right. You know, don't, don't do anything to ruffle his feathers. And I'm like, no. I'm just going in, going in. Two games later, he comes back on, and it, they their team beat us. So he's following me around the gym now. He's telling and you, and this is all in the in what you would call like the Space Jam yes. pickup game. Pickup game. Okay. Exactly. Before the season. Before the season. So now we fast forward to the season. Right. We're, and we're about to play Chicago in Vancouver. The greatest player, arguably of all yes. time, came to town for the very first time. The day was November thirtieth, nineteen ninety five. The Vancouver Grizzlies were 2-12, and 12, and they were up against the 1995-1996 Chicago Bulls. We're talking about Jordan's comeback season where the Bulls had the most wins of any championship team ever. This was the Death Star coming to town. And in the first quarter, it is not really there. And, you know, Jordan comes out and he, he hits a couple long jumpers. Michael at the arc. For two. Long moves. He's moving at half speed to the point where I'm kind of going like, is he ever going to run fast? Is he going to try? He kind of fades into the background a bit as much as, you know, Michael Jordan can. No matter what town we go to, the fans are up for it. The players on the other team are up for it. They want a piece of us. This is the biggest game of some of these guys' careers. And for Michael Jordan, he'd rather just kind of like, put up 25 shots, you know, score 30 points and hopefully go home with a 20 point win. But you quickly realize that maybe that's not going to happen tonight. 
Halftime comes. Chicago still up 44-42. Both teams just 19 points in that second quarter. Oh. We keep waiting for the Chicago Bulls to be the Chicago Bulls, and they are not. And we can start seeing on the sidelines a little bit, Phil Jackson looking a wee bit unhappy at this point. Yeah, and I mean, like, this is... Because, like, I actually think Phil Jackson didn't care for the first half either. <laughs> like, like, I think he's even just like, can I, like, go have a drink and, like, just go to bed or what? Actually, there was one point in the first half he was even bantering with some some fans they're all having a discussion i think with the fans behind the bulls bench i think these people are very distracted by the whole vancouver grizzlies thing but anyway he starts <laughs> getting pissed off we're up eight mike is four for 16 from the field he's having a really rough night right and you know it's funny in this third quarter what we get is what seems to be the signature antonio harvey energy burst antonio Michael running circles around Edwards, denied by Harvey. Defense, dunk, defense, gets pumped, you know, the crowd cheers, and you're like, like, is third quarter like Antonio Harvey time or something? We are getting to the end of the third quarter at this point, but then Derek Martin comes in. So I go by, make a layup, get N1, get fouled, we go up nine with about 10 minutes to go in the game, and we're winning. And I watch it, and I go, oh, nice. Like, that was one of the, you know, one of the, four or five best plays of the game to that point. But then quickly, my attention turns from the great play on the court to the, oh no, like, oh my God, what are you doing, man? As he, with a super kind of like nasty attitude, stomps towards the Bulls bench and, oh no, again, straight at Michael Jordan. And from behind, his head is nodding like he's saying some harsh words. something happens that sort of turns the entire narrative of this game around from one that we remember as Michael Jordan comes to town to Michael Jordan has one of his signature moments that is still remembered by certain people around the league to this game. And that is because of Derek Martin. He decides to say to Michael Jordan, who's having an off night, hey, Mike, shit's not falling tonight, Mike. You're having an off night, Mike. I told you we're going to whoop your ass tonight. <gasps> To Michael Jordan. <laughs> this is the moment I'm going like, dude, I get that you're pumped. I get this is a big moment. And who wouldn't be excited to do that? But you look at Michael Jordan and you walk the other way, man. You just walk the other way. Phil Jackson looks down the bench. I'm like, what do you want to do? Michael sees weakness in people. If he saw that the individuals were weak, he attacked and kept attacking until they quit. So Michael ties his shoes up. He's not, he's not in the game at no, this point. No, not in the game. He has his shoes untied. Th this is, the, is this the third quarter? And, they, and just as they cut to commercial, heading into the fourth quarter, they zoom in on Jordan sitting on the bench, and he is not happy. I will tell you that. He, you could tell. He's ruminating it. He's playing it over and over in his head. And everyone is thinking, who did not see that Martin-Jordan interaction, this could be Vancouver's night. This crowd is smelling something good in there. Oh, it is. This could be a huge upset. Like, Derek Martin, at this point, is begging to be embarrassed. <laughs> well, sure we're going to win. Yeah. Like, you can't. Yeah. You had the bucket. Yeah. You're up. You can't blow this. They don't need the game. They, this is the year where they win 72, 72 games. games. Right. We're not losing this one tonight. We're going to take this one home. Ties your shoes up. Walks in and says... <laughs> Little man, I told you about talking trash to me. I said, man, we up nine with three minutes to go. You're not beating me tonight. Really? And as soon as the Grizzlies get up by seven, that's when it turns. Jordan immediately gets a dunk. Michael. On the drive with the okay. Tomahawk. That's what they all came to see. And maybe that'll ignite him. Michael with only 12 points, his first basket here. Maybe Superman's come out of the uh, phone booth, huh? Yep. You know, the first time he goes to the bucket and he dunks, and it's the classic, it's the jump man pose, arm up, arm back, leg spread, classic tongue out and everything. It's the first time you see his true speed. And that speed is, it seems exponential to that of everyone else in the court. Like he's a full step ahead. Then he gets a step back long two. Over the top of Scott. Michael's second in a row, he has 14. Then he gets a circus layup. 
They clear it out. Oh, what a move oh. by Jordan on the reverse. Jordan gets a fade away. Oh, you time out, huh, Brian? It's an absolute whirlwind. It's he is showing why he is Michael Jordan. He gets a nasty and one fade away on country where he basically just shoves country in the face as he's uh, shooting. Under four minutes to go in the fourth. Jordan on the pull up. Yes, yes. and a foul. But country Score. couldn't get out of the way. 20 for MJ. I think they opened the phone booth just in time for Superman to arrive here in the fourth quarter. 10 points for Jordan in the fourth quarter. But then he gets a fadeaway, getting the Bulls up six. Against Byron Scott. Woo! And if you watch the video. His last jump shot, this is no lie, catches the ball in the post. The last one he made to win. He does the typical Jordan fadeaway. He's fading towards our bench. He knocks down the shot. They go up by six. He's looking for me on the bench. He walks over and I watched it like four times because it was such a key moment to the story of this game. He walks over and of course, just like perfectly scripted, Derek Martin sitting on the baseline, like he's not sitting on the bench, he's sitting on the ground, like where the squeegee kids sit and where sometimes like the trainers sit, maybe he's getting stretched out or whatever. But Jordan comes over and he's standing over him, all six foot six, and he admonishes him like a child. Like he looks down at him, he wags his finger. He turns to the bitch and says, Shut up, you little bitch. Yes. Shut up, you little bitch. Never fucking talk to me ever that way again. <laughs> Even more perfect than I imagined. <laughs> All right. Wow. wow. True story. And you can't, wow. hear, you can't hear what he says, but I promise you, his words were, Shut up, you little bitch. Don't ever fucking try this shit again. Like that was, it was so clear that he was treating him like a child, basically coming over to say, this is what you get if you say stupid shit to me. He gets a steal and a dunk with 30 seconds left. Green oh. roll, Harvey didn't roll. The steal by Jordan. Goes in on Anthony. Yes! Michael with the steal. Bull salting this one away. Then he gets another steal and another dunk to finish the game off. Again, tip, the Tony with the tip. tip. Tony, Michael. To the hole. Why not finish it that way? 29 he... for Jordan. The Bulls run their record on the road trip to five and one. And the final score, Michael Jordan with a hot fourth quarter, 19 in the fourth quarter. And the Bulls prevail on this one, 94 to 88. Jordan, 19 points in the final seven minutes. You do the math on that. If he played at that pace and played just 37, 38 minutes, he gets 100 points. But he was so mediocre in the first three and a half quarters, ended up with sort of a typical Jordan line, 14 for 26 from the field, 29 points, three rebounds, three steals, four assists. Both teams were bad that game, but all it took was Jordan stepping it on for six or seven minutes there at the end. So those are things that drove him, the little things that drove him. 24 points in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> he went on Goodness his nice gracious. 15 points to beat us. I poked a bear that night, and he showed me truly what greatness meant. And so that was a learning lesson for me. We go in the locker room after the game, like, right, Mike has killed us. Right. Byron Scott was assigned to guard Michael Jordan and had been doing a great job. Against Byron Scott. Woo! In every game that I went in playing against MJ, first of all, I was like, man, I'm happy it's just twice a year. You right. know, I ain't yeah, yeah, in the West because yeah. I'm happy it's twice a year. And it wasn't I was scared. It was just like, right. you know, I'm going to challenge his ass as much as I can. And then Mike lit him up for 24 points in right. the last 10 minutes of the game. And he is just embarrassing Byron Scott. Like, and I'm, like, I'm not even making fun of Byron Scott. Like, Byron Scott simply cannot, I was gonna say can't stay in front of him. He can't even really react. Like, that's Byron Scott left in the dust as Michael Jordan now goes to all world NBA jam on fire mode. He comes in the locker room, he's on fire. He walks up to Derek Martin and says, listen, don't you ever talk to the guy I'm guarding. I know this dude's a killer. Mm -hmm. I said, but I gotta, I gotta go out here and show up. Yep. You talk to your guy. Yeah. Don't you talk. Oh, we had to break. It was almost a fight in the locker room. And that's the story of Michael Jordan. And that's the story of the Vancouver Grizzlies. 
And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please help me out by hitting that like button. Let's aim for 3,000 likes. Here are two new MJ videos that I think you may enjoy as well. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will catch you guys tomorrow. Take care.